of the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank the Lord tonight. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. I thank Him for saving my soul. I thank Him for delivering me. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, you've been so 
awesome God you are. Come on, let's lift our hands all over the room. Magnify the King of Kings tonight. He's a great God. Oh, yes, you are, Jesus. I'm never enough Oh no Then you came along And you put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Come on, lift your voice and sing Oh,
Just say, thank you, Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing this to the Lord. And oh, how I love You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many of you glad to be in God's house tonight? Amen. Amen and amen. Look at somebody next to you and say, you're in the right place at the right time. And if you are seated in the sanctuary, you are a blessed person because there is hardly anywhere to go in the house. Why don't you look at the other person next to you and say, you're the best looking person on my row. I don't know who dressed you up, but you're looking good tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you let our musicians and our singers know how much you appreciate them leading us in the worship tonight? We're grateful for them. What a wonderful day. This is service number four for us today, and God has been moving mightily by His Spirit. Amen. And God is about to do something great in you tonight. He's already working things out for your good, but God is good tonight. So glad to have you in God's house. If this is your very first time to community, we welcome you. And we want to say to all of you watching online, can we let them know how much we love and appreciate you all watching? We love you and appreciate you all. You know, when, we're, when the Lord is up to something big, the devil's not too far behind. And today we had some technical difficulties and we've been having some issues and I'm not going to go into the details, but if you all can help us pray these little devils and these demons out, Get, get. It would be amazing because anyway, the Lord's going to work things out. If you, we are, are going to put today's message, did not pastor preach amazing today on those waters, but we will post that to um, our Facebook and our, our um, YouTube pages as well. That way you all can watch that. But just in the house today, we've had folks from New, uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Alabama, Hawaii, Texas, Michigan, Arkansas, Arizona, Mississippi, New York, Florida, Illinois, Germany, Switzerland, Virginia, California, Montana, Minnesota, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, and Illinois just in the house today. As Pastor Josh says, a church alive is worth the drive. 
And we want you to be, feel welcome in this place. So if this is your first time, we welcome you. We want you to feel at home in front of your seat. We have a connection card. That's how we connect with all of our, our guests and church family here at the church. If you would fill it out and place it in these offering containers to my left and my right. We have some in the very back, if you can find them among the people. And then up in the balcony, there's some drop boxes. But community, can you make all of our guests feel welcome tonight? I don't know how much we appreciate you having you here. We're grateful for that. Well, I've been through a little trial of myself. Tuesday morning, I went to teach at the university. And in, well, toward the end of my lecture, I felt a little weird. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. I came back, I looked, well, when I looked in the mirror, I was yellow, and I thought, hmm, this is not normal. Came back to the classroom, I said, you all are dismissed, I got to figure out what's going on. My first time to call 911, it was very strange, so I called 911, I said, look, I'm a professor at the university, I need you to come get me, I don't know what's going on. So the ambulance came, they took me to the hospital, come to find out I had a kidney stone, and I now look, this is my first time, and when people tell you, look, it's bad, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 it's bad, yeah, it's terrible, but until you've been through it, I'm going to tell you, it's bad, it's real bad, so I thought I was dying, so I went in the hospital Tuesday, I was back in the emergency room on Wednesday evening, but I want to say something Minister Boyd, that you were ministering to me on Wednesday because Aaron had a dream going on. I'm like this, and you're talking about going through the valley, and you're preaching. I'm going, yes, Lord, yes, yes, yes. And Aaron's behind me, massaged my back with a heating pad. I'm saying, yes, through the valley, yes, the shadow of death, yes. I can probably tell you everything you preached in that sermon, but God will take us through. Here, here's kind of the comical part. Three days later, the stone was rolled away. <laughs> so the Lord has an interesting way to teach us because, and I appreciate your prayers. I love this too. Uh, my mom told me this at this, you know, we have a church school here at, at the at church school and she uh, saw one of the teachers in the hallway and they immediately began to pray, speak in tongues over me just within minutes of that stone releasing itself. And I told the Lord, I said, you know, I've prayed everything I know how to pray. I don't know what else to pray. I mean, I'm here. You're gonna have to let the saints pray for me and get something through. My faith is here and that's as far as I can get it. So I wanna say a big thank you to everybody who prayed over me. And you know, it says something big about our church family. I know, you know, I told you where everybody's from, people from all over the United States and around the world here. This is truly the family of God and we look out for each other. We pray for one another. I can't tell you how many times I hear people say, it's just like walking right into home when I come to Community Family Church. That's how we want you to feel and that's what we want you to feel all the time, amen? So thank you for your prayers, I appreciate that. God can bring you through, amen? So if you have a kidney stone, make sure you text me because I'm going to be praying for you because I know exactly what you're going through. Amen. Has the Lord blessed anybody? He's blessed me. We're so grateful. Let's go ahead and say our offering declaration tonight. And then the United, our young adults are going to come up and sing a song for our offering. But let's go ahead and say our offering declaration today. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Let's say this with great fervor today, that we are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, give the Lord a great big amen and amen and amen. 
Now, I've been saying a lot of things in faith. You know, we're, we're, we're in the process of building a new sanctuary, and we will be breaking ground soon. Thank you, Jesus. But wouldn't it be a miracle if we celebrated our 70th homecoming in that new building a, a year from today? Now, that would be a, a super miracle, but God can do all things. But I'm believing next, within the next couple of years, we're going to have a facility. Everybody can come and enjoy the presence of the Lord together. But God is on the brink of doing something great. Amen, amen, and amen. If you'd like to give, we have several ways to do that. If you have a cash or check place in the envelope in one of these bins I talked about earlier, if you'd like to use text to give, that's the easiest way. Use your phone or your, your tablet. Uh, text the word 859-359-3997 and follow those prompts. Or you can go to cfcky.com. Give that way. If you're watching online, once again, we welcome you. If you'd like to mail in your gift, now this is important. If you do that, make sure you send a note, a letter, a prayer request, praise report, and let us know what the Lord is doing in your life. But send it to 11875 Taylor Mill Road, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Will you bow your head as we pray? Father, we thank you once again to be in your house on a Sunday night where the glory of the Lord is being lifted up in this house. And Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to continue to touch this service. Lord, we ask you to touch our pastor who's come with a, a word that is going to be delivered here tonight, Lord, that's going to set the captive free. Father, Lord, we ask you to touch him and bless him. Lord, bless those who have something to give and bless those who do not. Lord, we ask you to touch every missionary serving around this country and around the world, those who are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, let everything that we do at this church go for the benefit of the kingdom of God. And we can't give you enough praise. We can't give you enough glory. And we just thank you, Lord. And the church says... Amen and amen. If you would please stand and God bless you as you give tonight. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that there's nothing too big or too small that my God can't see me through it. Hallelujah. If you're going through a storm, if you're going through a situation, just turn it over to him. Put it all in his hands tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, Soprano.
in his hand. Put that marriage dilemma in his hand. tonight find you somebody you know I would I would move too far away from your seat if you don't shake hands just smile at them find you somebody you know somebody you don't know somebody you thought you knew somebody you're wondering who they are hallelujah Never doubt. I know the Lord. He's gonna bring me out. I know the Lord. He's gonna make a way.
we would, you know, I'm not going to go into detail like Brother Eric said because it's not going to give you one bit of spiritual benefit. But trying to explain what's going on in this house, if you were to buy a very old house that had just a few electrical hookups, and then your wife says, well, I want a dishwasher. And they say, well, it's not hooked up for one, but we can, you know, we can connect a little thing here and get an extension cord and plug it in. And then she says, I'd like to have this and, and that. <laughs> and before you know it, you've got extension cords that have these, have about 15 plugs in them. In order for us to, to rewire this church, it's going to cost over $700,000. So we're just enduring until the end. And there is an end coming. We're so thankful. And it's not that we have a bunch of extension cords around here. It's professionally done and it has safety guards and everything. Because if we didn't have the safety guards, every time we'd have a power surge, it would cost us seventy to $100,000 every time. And that happens about two or three times a month. That'd be a pretty big expense. But we're just so thankful. We're so thankful for all the pastors and ministers that we have here. We apologize for those of you that maybe didn't get to sit where you wanted to. But there's, uh, uh, you know, just be glad you're where you are. Be glad you're where you are. Nine o'clock, we had an incredible service. 1045 had a wonderful service. Through the difficulty, we still had a great power encounter. And at 1230, I stuck my head in the door and I just about, I was trying to get, make myself, I felt so convicted. I don't know about was convicted, that's from the Lord. So I, I felt so, I don't know what you feel when it's not the Lord but I wanted to be in here. I wanted to be in here and some said, no, you better go back. You better go back because you, you've had a big, big, big week, two, three weeks, month. <laughs> and, but we had a good crowd here at 1230. And my, my grandson came in and he said, oh, Paul, Paul, the Holy Ghost moved at 1230. <laughs> he, he knows when it moves. We thank God we mentioned these this morning, but since we went off the air, I'm going to go ahead and mention it again, because this, we have now had, we have now had 26 more families since last week in the last seven days to help us build the new sanctuary. We now have 1,714 families on board to help us. We have new partners, Derek, I don't have an address, but Athena from Aberdeen, North Carolina, a new partner, and here are the people that's given, and and they've come from Altoona, Iowa, that's Carson and Tamala, and Columbia, Louisiana, Courtney and Christy, the Living Water Church from South Carolina, Nicole from Ellenwood, Georgia, an insurance company from Hinesville, Georgia, Frank from Independence, Kentucky, Michael and Angie from Jackson, Kentucky, Stephen from Lexington, Kentucky, Betty from Mackville, Kentucky, Willie and Joni from Marietta, Ohio, Dolores from Monroe, Michigan, Starling and Lisa from Olmstead, Kentucky, Timothy, Jean and Sheena from Olympia, Washington, John from Ontario, Canada, David and Rosalind from Owasso, Oklahoma, Harvest Christian Center in Park Hills, Missouri, Carl and Charlotte from Ponca City, Oklahoma, Roger and Barbara from Pateau, Ohio, and we don't and Gary from Whitesburg, Tennessee, or Texas, and we don't have addresses for these for Delvin, Butch, Pamela, Tammy, Kevin, Claudia, and Kent because they gave through a credit card. But I want you to give God praise for all of these that are helping us build a new sanctuary. You know, we had visitors today from, come on up, brother, Brother Jim. We've had visitors today. I'm glad that's a hole in this skirt. <laughs> kilt, kilt. I used to preach very strict on things. I still believe it. But people whine and cry and scream. It's terrible. They said, I brought my niece and you said this and her feelings are hurt and and, and people don't know any better anymore. 
so I still preach the Bible. I just leave off the details. <laughs> Not of the Bible, of my notes. Hallelujah, in my head. But we had folks this morning from Switzerland, from Germany, and as Eric mentioned, all the different states of the United States. The Appalachian Mountains is where a lot of our people came from. The Appalachian Mountains was a melting pot. It was a place where the Scottish Highlands, those folks migrated, the Irish, different other nations, the African, and the, the Native American were already there. But this is part of the Scottish Highlands sound. And what song are you going to play? Are we supposed to? Well, well you were just mentioning uh, the work that needs to be done here. And uh, when you're watching online, as my family and I do, you kind of lose a little of the depth perception when you're seeing it on a screen, on a flat screen. And then you, then you come back here and you take a look and you think to yourself, oh yeah, you're going to need a bigger sanctuary. Uh, <laughs> um, so I have a little surprise for Pastor here uh, that I want to play first All right. before we do anything else. This is a bagpipe if you don't know what he's doing. You young people are getting an education. I never seen one of these in my life till he came across here. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want you to hit that note again and keep, keep that same. It sounds like this, the bagpipe keeps the same note anyway. Mm -hmm. We're going to try something. We're going to try to blend our Appalachian culture with a bagpipe and see what happens. Same song or something? Just that chord. Da, 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 da. Jesus bear the cross alone must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free and all the world go free The cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me, and there's a cross for me. One more time, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Must Jesus bear?
Oh, there's a cross for haven't sung your favorite song yet you got the rest of the week let's turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 3 Jeremiah 2 verse 3 we're so appreciative for all of I can't say it enough of all the ministry that's here let's stand for the reading of the word and you know uh Brother Rankin is perfectly right in his statement. You get, you can feel the anointing coming off when you're, you know, in your home, on your iPad, and on your iPhone. But I'm telling you, when you are surrounded by it, when it's on your iPad, it's, it's coming out of two little, two ways. <laughs> But when you get in a house like this, it's coming from everywhere. And about the time you, you think you're, maybe the level's going down a little bit, somebody behind you will say, glory to God. And they can't hear that. They, they don't feel that on the internet. But right now we have about 45,000 people watching, and we're just so thankful. We're believing God for an incredible miracle. Some folks who attend the Holiness Church came this morning. I don't think they're here tonight, but they brought their little children. And their little children have been saving. And I don't know what makes this happen, but little children, when they watch me on television, they tell their mommy, I want to preach like Brother Tommy Bates. I don't know. I guess it's the grandpa look. Is it the white hair? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to figure it out. But... Uh, those little children have been saving up money and each one of them had their own offering to bring. And as I said this morning, you look at an envelope with $3 in it and you say, what is $3 to an $18 million facility? That's what the old carnal, degenerate mind thinks. But that's what the old carnal, degenerate mind thought when the little boy brought his lunch. And Philip said, the only thing we have here is this little boy's lunch. And he said, what is that? That's what the world says, what is that? But you mark it down, there's going to be a supernatural multiplication of all these blue collar offerings that are coming in. We're going to see it. And when we see it, everybody on the internet's going to see it. And it's going to spread like wildfire that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. We're going to read one scripture. It's up on the screen for your convenience. Let's read it together. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Just for a few moments tonight, we're dealing with the subject, holiness unto the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Let this word be preached with mercy, with love, compassion. And as you teach me in the scripture, Lord, let this word be preached with demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. We give you all of the praise and all of the glory in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 
Just for a few moments this evening, we're dealing with the subject, holiness unto the Lord. Let's say that together. Holiness unto the Lord. Our text is found in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 3. He begins in chapter 2 and he says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying... Now this is the Lord talking. He wants to make it very clear. I've put this in Holy Scripture. I've guarded over it with the Talmudic and the Mesoretic scribes. I've put this in the Word of God. I've got something to say. I want you to go and I want you to cry into the ears of Jerusalem. I want you to passionately. You know, preaching is not screaming. I've heard people say when I'm talking, I'm teaching. But when I'm preaching, I'm screaming. I've heard people scream that made me nervous. They weren't saying anything. And I knew they weren't saying anything. Teaching is a subject for a particular group of people. When you have a marriage lesson, it's for a particular group of people. When you have 14-year-olds, it's for a particular group of people. You teach on the fruit of the Spirit. You teach on the gifts of the Spirit. You teach on the coming of the Lord. You teach on how to balance your checkbook. You teach all of these things. But that is the ministry of the five-fold ministry in the Bible. But there is something called the foolishness of preaching. It's called foolishness because it makes no sense to the world. How that one can speak, and whether you're five years old like I was when I came and to the knowledge of the consciousness of God, or whether you're 95, whether you're poor or whether you're rich, whether you're married or whether you're single, whether you're at a high social status or a low social status, when someone is moved on by the unction and the passion. Now, I don't, I don't get up here to yell. Somebody said, well, you do an awful lot of it. That's because the passion takes over. I mean, passion starts rising up in me. It's not something I'm screaming to let you know I'm preaching. There's a passion that rises up. And the Lord said, I want you to passionately, seriously, I want you to talk to my people. You tell them, I remember when. I keep good records. I remember when they came to me, busted, broke, disgusted. I remember when their body was shaken with drug addiction. I remember when their heaviness and burden was on them so strong. And I remember when they came to me and I lifted away that bondage. I remember this. And there was such a love that they had for me. God said, I remember that love that they had for me. They loved me so much. They got up in the morning loving me. They ate their lunch loving me. They went to bed loving me. They loved the singing. They loved the preaching. They loved the testifying. They loved to go to the house of God. They loved to be with the people of God. They couldn't wait to get to the house of God. They couldn't wait to be with the people of God. He said, I remember when. I remember when those days were. He said, it was like a young couple that was engaged to be married and they couldn't get their eyes off of each other because they were longing for the time when they would be with each other till death do them part. He said, you went after me in the wilderness where there was no seed. You went after me when there was nothing promised to you. You hear me? You went after me when I came to you. He said, I remember. You weren't asking for a bigger house. 
You weren't asking for a bigger car. You weren't asking for better clothes. You weren't asking for everything. All you knew was you were in Egypt's bondage and you didn't have anything. Everybody else was living in a big house and there was pyramids all around you and the whole nation was being blessed and here you were. You were nothing but a slave. You were a slave. You were in bondage to the situation and you loved me and you couldn't wait to be with me and you said, I'll follow you. I don't have to have a house. I don't have to have land. I don't have to have this. I don't have to have that. I don't have to have anything and you followed me in the wilderness. You walked with me in the wilderness. There were no trees to be found. There were no beautiful scenarios around you. There was nothing around you that was attractive but yet you followed me. You said, I'm going to follow you. I don't care if everybody leaves. I'm going to follow you. He said, I remember that. I remember that experience. I remember the times that you had when you walked in such dedication and devotion and, and consecration unto me. I remember that. He said, you followed me and all you could see was me. You weren't looking for green pastures. You weren't looking for flowers and shrubs. You weren't looking for a land flowing milk and honey. You was looking at me because everything you needed was in me. I was your rock in a weary land. I was your pillar of fire by night. I was your cloud by day. I was your manna that came from heaven. I was everything you needed every time you needed it. There was nothing, there was no resource around you. There was no money, there was no clothes, there were no department stores, there was nothing that could substitute because you were totally focused on me and you knew as long as I follow him, he's gonna put clothes on my back. He's gonna put shoes on my feet. He's gonna put a shelter over my head. He's gonna be with me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll take me through the valley of the shadow of death. He will take me through the storm. He will take me through everything. And as long as I'm with him, no no evil thing has any power over me. You went after me. All you could see was me. He said, Israel. There's two words that are interchangeable in the scripture. One's Israel, one's Jacob. Jacob was when he was a manipulator, when he was a conniver, when he was one that operated in the flesh. But then he had a wrestling match with God. And at the break of dawn, God changed his name to Israel because he had a new experience. He had a new walk with God. He said, Israel, this changed person you were, this one that came out of Egypt through the blood, this one that was, came through the Red Sea was holiness unto me, holiness unto the Lord. That word holiness means consecrated, there's two words in the scripture. One is sanctification and the other one is consecration. Sanctification is the work of God. His name is Jehovah Makedesh. He is my sanctifier. He sanctifies me through the spirit. He sets me apart and I'm born through the spirit. I'm baptized into one body by the spirit of the living God. He sanctifies me through the word. He transforms me by the word of God that he may present me unto him a bride without spot or wrinkle with the washing of water by the word of God that he might sanctify himself a people. But he knows I have the weakness of the flesh. He knows I have temptations. He knows that I, I have struggles. He knows that I'm in a vessel of clay and because that I'm apt to fail and because I'm apt to slumber, he also sanctifies me with the blood. And he said, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't care how hard you fall. I don't care how bad you fall. All you gotta do is look up to me. I have provided the atoning blood for your past, your present, and your future. All you've got to do is confess your sins. I'm faithful and just to forgive you. I am a high priest. I've sanctified you. And what sanctified means is he chose me when I didn't choose him. He wanted me when I didn't want him. He went after me when I was running away from him. He is the sanctifier. He sanctified me through the spirit. He sanctified me through the word. And he sanctifies me through his blood. I am set apart. I am his. I'm in the 
palm of his hand. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I shall overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. But consecration, consecration is what I do unto the Lord. Because I love him, I consecrate music. I consecrate the things that I listen to because I love him. Because I love him, I consecrate my vacation. I don't backslide when I go on a cruise. I don't backslide when I go on vacation. Because I love him. Now listen, you, you can't leave all this up to the cross. He's done everything on the cross for you. But if God's gonna use you and if God's gonna put you in the kingdom, if you're gonna be the head and not the tail, if you're gonna be up and not beneath, if you're gonna be the one that's gonna drive the enemy off your home and your family, if you expect to be blessed in the city and in the field, he's already sanctified you, he's already saved you, he's already brought you into the kingdom and the more you consecrate yourself, I promise you, the more power is gonna be released in your life. Power is based on consecration. Power is based on what are you going to do for God. God's not going to buy. God's not going to give you the gifts of the Spirit if you got one foot in the hell hole and the other foot in the house of God. God's not going to give you the power if you're walking in filth of the flesh and you're coming in the fullness of the Spirit. It's not going to happen. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a saved man. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a sanctified man. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a man that's got the blood. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a man that's got the Savior, and I must consecrate myself. And the higher level of consecration, you're going to see a higher level of power. Because he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, they will follow you. But they're only going to follow the church because Calvary's price was paid. As we consecrate ourselves to him, we're going to see cancer come off of you, Dina. We'll see cancer come off of you, Precious. We'll see cancer cancer come off of Ryan Smith. We'll see cancer come off. We'll see blinded eyes open. We will see drug addicts delivered. We will see we will see the social uproar that's in this nation. Deliverance in this house through and by the consecrated church that's made up her mind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Holiness. This word holiness means consecration. He said, Israel, Israel was consecrated unto the Lord. My music gets consecrated. My wardrobe gets consecrated. I know people don't like to hear you say that, but it does get consecrated. I said it gets consecrated. My vacation is consecrated. Everything I do is consecrated unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You consecrate yourself. He said, hear the word of the Lord. O you house of Israel. O house of Jacob. He's showing you the struggle. He said, hear the word of the Lord. You house of Jacob and the families of Israel. He knows there's a struggle in you. He knows that Jacob wants to run up and manipulate God. He knows that Jacob wants to take over in your life. And he says, hear Jacob and hear Israel. He's telling you it's the same one, but he's calling them two different names because one tends to go the other way and one tends to go the right way. There's something inside of you that wants to go the wrong way. I don't care how much I jump up and down. That's not your victory. That's my victory. Now you can come in here and watch the rest of us, but you're never going to have the victory you need to have until one day you say, God has saved me. I have eternal security. I'm covered by the blood. I'm sanctified by the word, the spirit and the blood. I'm sanctified. And because of this, I'm going to consecrate myself because I want God to use me. I want God to use me in such a way. I want God... And this is what we need. We need a restoration of the saints of God that 
we had in the days of old that came before God in consecration. They feared God and they kept his commandments and God's, God confirmed them with signs and with wonders by his spirit. That's the struggle. Verse five. Verse five, he says, thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have I done? What have I done? What bad thing have I done to you? What have I done to you that now that, you have, that you've gone far from me and you've walked in vanity? That word vanity means emptiness and empty things. What have you done? What have I done to you? What have I done to you that you've got time for games? You've got time for parties. You've got time for leisure. You've got time for your hair. You've got time for your nails. You've got time for sports events. You've got time to hunt the turkey. You've got time to fish the bass. You've got time for video games. You've got time for anything you want. But when it comes to the house of God, you just don't have any time at all. You don't know what you're going to do. You're just wore out. And everything you're chasing is empty. Everything you're chasing is empty. I'm going to tell you something. Now, when Eric got that, uh, got that uh, uh, kidney stone, and it was on Tuesday, Tuesday night, I was here, and I felt led to go over and pray for him. And we prayed for him at quarter after eight. Immediately, the pain was gone. He thought the kidney stone was dissolved. I thought it was dissolved. We thought it was. I mean, the Spirit of God moved. He got up that next morning. He fixed the family a big breakfast. He fixed the family a big supper. He was doing just fine. But when I left the house, his little daughter, the little bitty one, she come back running back in his bedroom and she says, Daddy, the, the Lord has rolled away the stone. <laughs> now, do you think you get that kind of children when you're living in a hoot nanny? You think you get that kind of, you think you get those kind of children when you got television on that's so loud, it's blaring every secular thing that's going on. You can't even hear yourself talk because of all the stuff that's going on on that television. Do you think you're going to raise children that are going to have faith when they're surrounded by an atmosphere that's so secular, it's so humanist, it's so much like the world. They come to church and it's almost like a strange environment, like what's going to happen next. They look like a hoot owl. Is what's going to happen next. I've never seen this before. Everything that's happened in here should not be a surprise to you. It should not be a surprise to you. It should be an expectation. It should be something that's expecting. That, oh, hallelujah. When you come into the house of God, there should be what happened in your house is going to happen in my church. What happened in my prayer closet is going to happen in the house of the Lord. Verse six, he said, you never ask where I am. You don't, even, you don't even inform. I'm not in your thoughts. You know, he's preaching a message to the American church right here. I'm not even in your thoughts. I'm not even in your mind. Lord, have mercy when the Holy Ghost just shot that out of me this morning. That was unrehearsed. I've got Jesus, got him on my mind. He said, I'm not even in your mind. Verse seven, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. And he said, but, he said, but when you entered, that was with Joshua 800 years before. He, he said, after you entered, he said, now look, time has passed by. I've blessed you. I've called your crops to run over. I've caused your vineyards to run over. I've blessed you. I've blessed you. I've blessed you. But you've defiled my land and you've defiled my heritage. You've made it an abomination. I can't believe what you've done. And he said, on top of that, he said, your leader is corrupt. Your priests, he said that where is the Lord? They don't say where is the Lord. The priests don't come out and say we need the Lord. They, and those that handle the word of God, they don't even know who I am. They don't even know me. And the pastors that are supposed to be taking care of the flock, they've also transgressed against me. And they've come to this place. This is where we are in America, folks. It's so sad. We've got steeples and, and we got steeples and chandeliers 
and pipe organs of churches that don't even know who God is. They don't even know who Jesus is. Oh, bless his name forevermore. And then, but then in verse nine, he says, yet will I plead with you. I'm not gonna give up on you. I'm not gonna quit on you. You may turn me off, but I can't be turned out. You may shut my voice off, but you'll never shut me off. I'm gonna go after you. I'm gonna chase you because of that blood that's shed on Calvary. There is nothing that's gonna stop me. I'm gonna come into your dead churches. I'm gonna come into your dead families. I'm gonna come into your hypocrisy. I'm gonna come into your abominations. I know they're dressing like women. I know men are dressing like women. I know there's a transgender social thing that's going on and confusing the children. I know that's going on, but that's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna come right in the middle of it. I'm gonna plead with you. I'm gonna plead with your children. I'm gonna plead with your children's children. I'm gonna plead with your grandchildren. There is nothing that's gonna stop God. He said in the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He's gonna invade. He's gonna come to every house. I'm looking for it to happen. I said, I'm looking for it to happen. No matter how worldly, how dry, or how contemptible it may appear or seem to be, God is gonna make his way through. Yes. In verse 10, he said, search the islands. Go up to the Aegean Sea. Go up to Cyprus. Search the south. Go through Egypt. Go through Ethiopia. Go through all the nations of the world. Have they changed their gods? He said, which are yet not gods in the first place. He said, the world hasn't changed their gods. But my people have changed their glory. I'm telling you what, this satisfied feeling that's in the deadbeat American church, it's getting ready to have a ruffle like it's never happened before. The spirit of Jeremiah is going to sweep like fire. I said it's going to sweep like fire. Down here in, in Kentucky at the, uh, at the university, come on, somebody help me what it was. Down there in Wilmore, Yes, the Asbury University church is normal. Everything going is normal. A religious system, the Methodist church, it's no secret. They'd already been ordaining homosexual pastors. They'd already accepted same-sex marriages. They'd already accept transgenderism. I went to do a funeral at one of the churches, a big church, and they'd already taken the signs off the restroom door. It never said male. It never said female. It said occupied and unoccupied. All of them were different. There was no such thing as a male and a female. They had them in the other parts of the church. But when you came in the front, it said occupied and unoccupied. I never made any comment because on the wall they had the most beautiful picture of Jesus and Jesus in the Beatitudes he was and it was all scripture everywhere you looked was scripture it looked like it was right but it wasn't right uh, everything looked like it was in the right place uh, and now at Asbury University this past February in the middle of that controversy of that Methodist school where some of them were conservative and some of them were liberal all at once something broke loose uh, God began to shake uh, and God began to quake uh, it caused such a disturbance uh, 20,000 at least at one time and then up to 30, then 35 and the police reported that there was no way to even, even judge how many people were coming it was they were being drawn from everywhere coming to this university and seeing this stir of the spirit of the living God and this is what happened in our area the college students that were at Wilmore at the Asbury University they went to Cincinnati to the largest Methodist church and the students said pastor we got to know which side of the fence are we on? Are we conservative or are we liberal? And the pastor was so moved, he called the congregation to come in on a Sunday night. He said, we're going to vote whether we're conservative or whether we're liberal. And on that vote on Sunday night, it was 96%. We're going to stick with the word of God. We're going to stick with God's power. I'm telling you, there is coming a shaking. 
I said there's coming a shaking. There is coming. God's going to have a people. He's not going to forsake these little children. He's not going to forsake these little babies. He hears the cries of the children. He hears the cries of the abused child. He hears the cry of the addicted child. He, they've never had a chance. Many of them never seen a revival. But God's going to have mercy. He's going to shake them. I'm going to plead with you. I'm going to plead with your children. I'm going to plead with your grandchildren until everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Oh, let's lift our hands. Say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. I will plead. I will plead. I will plead. I will plead. Hallelujah. And then he says, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of pure living water. And they've dug them out cisterns. These are broken cisterns that can hold no water. Now, young people, I loved God with all of my heart. In 1972, when the Lord set me on fire, he saved me, sanctified me by the Spirit by the word is still sanctifying me progressively. And by the blood, when I need repentance, he sanctifies me by the blood. But I consecrated myself. I was so hungry for God. I seen what the Carter had. I seen what the people of old had. I said at the feet of ma'am of ma'am of ma'am shell. I said, ma'am, tell me. Tell me about this baptism of the Holy Ghost. Aunt Mally, tell me about it. They were in their 90s. They'd received the Holy Ghost in 1909. I want to know what it was like before all the paraphernalia was added. I want to know what it was like before the gold and the glitter. I want to know what it was like. How what what happened? I wanted to know. I said at the feet, and I remember saying, God, I want what they got. I I've got to have what they got. I want it, Lord. I want to see the manifestation. I want to see the demonstration of the Spirit of God. I want it, Lord. I consecrate myself. And I, I consecrated my music. I consecrated. I was going to Northern Kentucky University. We Clark carpool because in the olden days, 275 didn't exist yet. So you had to drive from Independence. You had to go down Taylor Mill. A twisty road was Taylor Mill. And you got to Covington. Then you took up, you paid a a dime to cross the shortway bridge into Newport. Then once you got to Newport you come back and you went up Johns Hill. It took one hour and 20 minutes to get to Northern Kentucky University. There were five of us that carpooled and, and, and I happened to have an eight track. Hallelujah. Dad said, Dad come in. He said look what I got you. He said I got you the newest thing out there. He said it's an eight track and I had from the Voices Triumphant. They were a singing group and they sung a song that said come and go with me to my father's house they sang there ain't no grave so there were five of us carpooling and when it was their turn to carpool they'd put WSAI 1360 WSAI and I had to listen to your mama don't sing and your daddy don't rock and roll I had to listen to what you gonna do and she says goodbye goodbye what you gonna do and she is gone I had to listen to I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen lonely days that I thought would never end. I had to listen to everything they did. But let me tell you, when it come my time, they said, Bates, you're not going to do it to us again, are you? I said, I've been waiting four weeks for this. I took my eight track. I put it in there for one hour and 20 minutes. You got to look this world system in the eye and say you can put me down for four weeks but if I only get one week my one week it's going to be consecrated it's going to be dedicated it's going to be living for God you'll never get a preaching engagement being worldly you'll never see the power of God being worldly you'll never have the touch of God as long as you got one foot in a slop hole and the other foot trying to do something it's not going to happen you got to come out come out come from among the world. Woo! Woo! So in that university, I joined the Baptist Student Union. I was for God. I didn't care if it was Baptist or, Hol or Holiness or Methodist. I was for God. 
I joined the Baptist Student Union. And I was right there with them. I sung their songs. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And they're singing it, and I'm going, if they only do. <laughs> the Baptist Student Union, the Baptist Student Union got a letter. And it said, just want to warn you, you have a holy roller <laughs> among you. We are Satanist. We hate him more than any of you. That's good, be on Satan's wanted list. I don't want to cast out the devil. And he says, Paul, I know, and Peggy Richards, I know, and Amy Sipo Fierce, I know. Who are you anyway? I want hell to know who my name is. I want that demon to go down the directory of hell and say, oh, there he is, Tommy Bates, 1972. He's been covered by the blood. He's been anointed by the Holy Ghost. He has power to cast out devils, to speak with new tongues, to lay hands on the sick. He has power. the Baptist Student Union. Their Baptist eyes got about that big. They said, the church of Satan said they're going after you and they're going to see you come down. They all had their Bibles in their hands like this. I walked out of my classroom one day. Here come their representative. Had his cross upside down. His jet black, everything black. Black fingernails, black, black, black. He was coming, like this. Walking down the hall in Northern Kentucky University. He's walking like this. I come out of the classroom and I went, Is there a boy that can scream? Nobody wants to admit it. I don't know if you've ever heard a boy scream or not. Can that boy scream? Scream, boy. That was it. That big old boy from the Satan church he screamed like a woman. He took off running. I didn't even get a chance to cast the devil out of him. I wanted to cast the devil out of him. I'm here to tell you, if you live consecrated, if you live dedicated, doors will open. Doors will open. God will bless you. God will pour out his spirit on you. So it was worth it. They say, Bates, can you turn that down? Because the voices triumphant were singing, come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house. There'll be no dying there. There'll be no crying there. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house. They said, Bates, can you turn it down? Can you turn it down? I said, no. I had to listen to your stuff for four weeks. And I said, for one hour and 20 minutes there and one hour and 20 minutes back, you're going to hear Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Who are you talking to? I was talking to the captain of the baseball team. I was talking, I don't care how high their position was. I was talking to most attractive in Simon Kidding. And he was a good looking man. I was not that good looking. I wasn't close to it. But it didn't make any difference whether he was good looking. And I was ugly as a mud rail fence. What I had inside of me. I said what I had inside of me. It's what causes demons to tremble. It's what gives you victory in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. So, you know you're young, you got to make money. Or at least you used to. <laughs> And we were taught something real strange. To get money, you had to... Don't say it too loud. We don't want anybody to get sick in here. You had to work. Oh, but I love God. I didn't want to miss church. I did everything I could so I could be at church. I was in church from 1973... I got on fire in 1972. I was six years, never missed church, not one time. When we didn't have a church service, we had a prayer meeting. But we was in church every night. And two or three times, sometimes during the day, it was just on me. I couldn't get out of me. It was just overwhelming me. I was overtaken by it. I had to have it. I had the more of it. I was addicted to it. Oh, I was totally addicted to it. I'd get withdrawals if I didn't have it. I would just go through shakes if I didn't have it. I would sit in the house and wonder, when's it going to happen again? When's the power going to fall again? Wasn't that the way it was, Karen? We were teenagers. I'm older than you. But there, there was such an anticipation. We couldn't wait to come to the house of God. Oh, my goodness. They put us on a bus and take us somewhere and we'd be shouting on the bus and shouting off the bus so I took crazy not crazy jobs but I did jobs that nobody else would do like digging a out house hole I didn't say getting in an outhouse I said digging an outhouse hole and another one was cleaning out I gave piano lessons, banjo lessons, guitar lessons. Had 27 of those students, worked at Kentucky Buff. And then I did these other jobs on the side. And one of them was cleaning out cisterns. Now we're out here in the country, okay? We didn't have city water. Nobody had city water. Some of us started getting it about when I was about 14, 15 years old. We couldn't believe it. You could turn the shower on, leave it on. Well, first of all, nobody had showers. Because when you have cistern water, you don't have a shower. And when I'd go and stay at my cousin's, they had three girls and two boys. The three girls got the bath water first. And they'd heat the water on the stove and they kept on adding one of those old-fashioned bathtubs with the claw feet on it. And they were deep. Oh, when you was little, you'd go underwater and everything. It was wonderful. <laughs> but I'm telling you, by the time we got to the bathwater, the mother, the father, the three daughters that all had their bath, and they'd added so much water, it was a nice, beautiful gray. <clears throat> You all are saying I can't believe it. This is not true. It's not true. Did he say gray water? We get our bath in there. We's all 14, 13, 14. Somebody said, how in the world did you do that? Well, it was real easy. Two of them sit on the side of the bathtub like this. You soaked up, you went under. They soaked up, they went under. Then the third one soaked up and went under. Then we got to pull the plug, and it went from gray to a nice shade of charcoal brown. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but I cleaned out cisterns. Let me tell you something. You have never, if you knew what that water was like in a cistern, if you let it go for three or four years, it has about a foot of what you call sludge. In that sludge are dead rotted mice, dead rotted rabbits, 
dead rotted birds and frogs and lizards and salamanders, somebody's tennis shoe. <clears throat> You're right. I would get down there and they'd put the water pump, pump all the water out till it got to the sludge. Then when it got to the sludge, I had to scoop it up, put it in the bucket, climb up the ladder, dump it out. Scoop it in the bucket, climb up the ladder, pump it out. Scoop it in the ladder, scoop it in the bucket, climb up the ladder, throw it out. I did this till the sludge was down to nothing. Then they'd give me a, a little water with a water hose, and I would take it and I'd spray it down again. I'd sweep it down, finally get it down, sludge it out. Then you take bleach, and you bleach it all over. My goodness, ammonia nitrate would probably kill you. But then after you got the bleach, then you took whitewash, which is lime and water, and you mixed it, and you whitewashed the whole thing. You just It's just white all over. I don't know how I'm even existing right now can be down there in that hole oh my goodness somebody call a doctor but we're still here aren't we and after all of that was over and this is what I want to tell you this is what Jesus said he said I can't even believe you you have traded a fresh spring of living water that is so beautiful, that is so crystal, and is so clear, and you'd rather have something with dead rabbits, dead skunks, dead, dead, dead mice, dead birds in it. Why in the world do you want that kind of life when you can have a life that's running over with springs of living water? I want you to high five and tell somebody, say, I don't want the cistern. Come on, tell them, I don't want the cistern. I want the springing water. I want the living water. God is getting ready to call the church back to holiness. He's calling the church to consecration. I promise you tonight, if you'll consecrate yourself, Sister Missy, you've got 300 and something thousand, I guess, or more by now. You've got, I don't know how many by now, huh? 360,000 that's watching her cook biscuits and gravy and watching her do country things. Uh, it's, you hear me tonight. You hear me. Hear me good. I promise you, you young people live consecrated. You're going to excel because ye shot time. Yo and I call many. I solo kosha, call many. Hallelujah. The ring of Pharaoh is getting ready to come on Joseph's hand. The scepter of the king of Pharaoh. Of, of, Persia is getting ready to slip. It's getting ready to slip on Esther's finger. David's getting ready to be called out of the sheepfold. All it's going to take is one thing. Consecration. 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 If you come out from among the world, God's going to prove his power. He's going to prove his spirit. He's going to prove his anointing. Let's all stand. Did you hear that? Holy Ghost said, I call many. If you will just dare to be consecrated. We weren't allowed to go to the prom. Pentecostals, that was all. They asked me to sing a song. They said, Tom, we got a band coming. It was heavy metal rock band. They sang Rolling Stones and all that kind of stuff. They said, but we want you. Me. I'm consecrated. There's going to be 700 there. All the school teachers are going to be there. Prom in the old days was the biggest thing in the county. Out here in Independence. There wasn't anything any bigger than the prom. As as big as it could get for country folks. School teachers all there. We never even heard of a crowd in Independence of 700. But I think there's about 750 that was at our prom. The faculty, the staff... 312 in the graduation class and their dates. They said, we want you to sing. We, we know you go to the Holiness Church, the Pentecostals. But you could sing John Denver. Sunshine on my shoulder makes me happy. Can you sing that? I said, no. How about James Taylor? 
I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I said, I do like the song, but I can't sing it because I'm consecrated. What about Jim Crochet? Is that how you say it, Crochet? What about Jim Crochet? You know you, of course, I sang that to Teray when we were by ourselves. I sang, I know it's kind of late And I didn't mean to wake you But there's something I got to say I knew you'd understand Every time I tried to tell you The words just came out wrong So I've So I've got Let me see, words just came out wrong What's wrong with you old people? Can't you remember nothing? <laughs> but I've got to say I love you. There they come. They said, how about Jim Crochet? I said, no, I can't do it. Come on, surely you can sing Carol King. You've got a friend. Oh, I could play it on the piano too. I said, no, I can't. We're not allowed. We're not supposed to. They said, okay, but we really wanted you. I was a little let down. They came back three days later. The school faculty, the senior class officers have all met. We don't care what you sing. <laughs> Just sing. You. The devil told me I wouldn't go anywhere. I'd never have friends. I'd never be anything. He said, you'll be a holiness preacher. You'll wear long sleeve shirts and no have no friends. You'll be poor. You'll never have money. He said, people have to buy you shoes. But I was willing to go through the wilderness with him. And I was willing. And once I got willing to go through the wilderness, one day I stepped into the land of plenty. I said, I stepped into the land of plenty. Look at all my friends. I said, look at all my friends. Consecrated. Because of the level of consecration. I was substitute teaching over at Rowland Heights Elementary. There was 240 something people put an application in for an incredible job teaching a sixth grade at Crittenden Mount Zion. 240 qualified, much better than me. I just finished my degree in December. They finished theirs in the spring. They'd had their application in for months. But because I was consecrated, the principal called me and I said, he said, I want you to come down. I have a sixth grade position open. I said, I know I've heard about it, but I haven't put an application in. He said, don't tell anybody. You don't need one. I said, Jay, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? Has he opened doors for you? Has he given you opportunities? Has you put, he put you in places that everybody else wanted, but they couldn't get it? But you got it. It's consecration. And God wants it for everybody. But there's a line. There's a line between your sanctification and your consecration. He said, you don't have to fill out an application. He said, we'll do that when you get here to make it all legal. I said, but you don't know me. He said, no, but let me tell you something, son. Your reputation is speaking for you. At 23 years old, when all of the school teachers we're working on curriculum development. Out of all the teachers in the whole county, because of consecration, they said, 
we want you to be over the head of curriculum development of the history department. I'm only 23 years old. What do I know about curriculum development? I want you to hear me by the Spirit. Some of you are going to raise up in positions of politics. Some of you are going to become principals. Some of you will be presidents of banks. Some of you are going to be the leading. Where's Eric at? That's okay. How in the world did a tongue talking, shoulder shaking, Pentecostal preacher's son, and he has the same characteristics? How in the world did he end up to be co chairman of the anthropology department at Northern Kentucky University? And when they came to him, Oh, I hope I'm not supposed to. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell this or not. I'll get in trouble, but I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> when they came to him, when the Creation Museum and the Ark was getting ready to be up, they said, all of the university teachers must sign this petition against it. We don't want this kind of thinking to come into the minds of our students. Eric said, take it back. I'm not signing it. What happened? Elevation. Elevation. Tell me, Twyla. How, how, did a, how did a holiness woman like you end up when they needed a personal secretary for North Carolina's governor? How in the world did you, with long sleeves, no lipstick, got your hair in a bun? My goodness, woman, what's wrong with you? You've got the favor and the consecration of God. And I'm going to tell you one more thing before I shout. Tomorrow, a Kentucky girl from the holiness, the Pentecostal, the apostolic way is going before the Supreme Court. There's a possibility that this little holiness girl with long hair and the whole works is going to stand before the Supreme Court. There's a possibility that laws in America are going to change again in the presence of the Supreme Court because God... If you feel that God's got a plan for your life, I want you to run down here, throw your hands up, and say, I will be consecrated. Come on, get close. Come on. I will be consecrated. I will be consecrated. Holiness, 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 holiness. Sing. Out of Ohio, while they're coming, let's fill it in. Come on, everybody. There's going to be a huge power encounter here. Come on, fill in the middle. did not give an invitation to the lost so right where you are you can be saved right where you are we're all going to pray this prayer for anyone that's a backslider away from God let's pray this prayer with them everybody say it out loud say Jesus 
forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And tonight, I surrender my life to you. Now let's praise God with them if anyone did this. Come on, let's lift our hands and say, I surrender. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift. Don't be afraid of consecration. I don't preach on hair and makeup and earrings and all that because what makes the difference? We make in a rule. God speaks to you on your level of consecration. There's games I don't play, places I don't go, and things I don't wear, but that's my consecration. God will speak to you on your own level of consecration. And you don't have any business trying to consecrate somebody else. You hear me? Stay out of everybody else's consecration level. Let's all pray this prayer together, and I want you to mean it. Because I heard the Spirit so loud tonight say the ring of Pharaoh is coming on Joseph's hand. That is powerful. He said the scepter of the king of Persia is going to be placed in the hands of Esther. And I heard him say, I'm going to bring David out of the sheepfold and put a crown on his head. All of us tonight, lift your hands toward heaven if you can, if you can. Say, Jesus, tonight, I consecrate myself, my vocabulary, my vacations, my wardrobe, my leisure. Tonight, I've heard the truth. I want to be used of you and I know you've chosen me Lord help me to go from level to level of consecration I know the power is not in my consecration the powers in the blood the powers in the finished work of Calvary but I know that you will use me with this power in the same level of my consecration. So tonight, I consecrate myself to you. Now I want you to lift those hands and you talk to God yourself. You got words. You got vocabulary. Come on, you got vocabulary. Hallelujah. Evangelist from Mississippi, you're in the Assembly of God. Church of God, a Church of God Evangelist through Mississippi. Brother, you're a voice. You felt like you're an insignificant voice. But God has brought you to this house, first of all, to relieve the depression and oppression off of you. The spirit of inferiority and unworthiness is leaving off of you tonight. Joseph was a nobody from nowhere, but he ended up at the kingdom of Pharaoh. Ashanatai, Ela Bahora Bahaya. Hallelujah. David was overlooked when the greatest thing came to his house. But God tonight is telling you as you consecrate yourself in such a way, the things that you've dreamed of and that you've read about and that you've heard about are going to be at your hands. Oh, come on, church. Give God a praise.
we dismiss you, what I want you to do is I want you sisters to find a sister. I want you elders to mingle in. You ministers, I want you to start praying for each other right now. Because the gifts of the Spirit are working. But there's so much information that's coming my way. I don't even know where it's at. But the needs are great. I said the needs are great. The needs are great. You came one way, you're going to leave another one, brother. You came in the door one way, but you're going to leave another way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what way you came in here, but the Spirit is going to take you home another way. church they said why in the world do you have all that space in the front you can get 400 more chairs I said oh but we have great altar calls they said do you need that much room hallelujah come on let's give him praise sing some more let these pray more we're going to go off the air right now give our video crew a good rest because they got to be here tomorrow night for bishop tim hill tuesday night greg atkins and wednesday night we're going to have bishop marvin winans oh my goodness hallelujah it's going to be a hallelujah meeting i said it's going to be a hallelujah meeting glory oh let's have a revival from the pulpit to the pew Ever, this generation desperately needs to know the Word of God. I am so thankful that Pastor Tommy Bates preaches on compromised truth that by the power of the Holy Spirit is able to set this generation free. We continue to receive countless testimonies of salvation, healing, deliverance, and many miracles that the Lord is doing through this ministry. By His grace, we are believing for many more. The message of Jesus is going around the world and lives are being transformed. We invite you to partner with Tommy Bates Ministries as you feel led by the Holy Spirit as we glorify Christ and continue to advance His kingdom together. To partner or contact Tommy Bates Ministries, 
visit TommyBates.com or write us at P.O. Box 30, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Or call 1-866-411-1032.